Here is a more detailed way of looking at this scenario. In this diagram, the cameras would be on the right side of the screen here, and the cameras are in material number three, which we'll say is free space. The Earth would be on the far left side of this diagram beyond where we can see. So I'll put an arrow there saying it's way over that direction. And by the time the optical or the infrared electromagnetic waves from the Earth reach the satellite, they're going to look like plane waves, which we usually use draw with double lines with an arrow showing the direction of propagation. Let's assume that the plane waves are normally incident on the cover meaning this direction of propagation makes a 90 degree angle with the uh, interface here. And this cover, so material number two here, is basically the covering that we want to put on the satellite uh, used to cover up the cameras. Our goal is to have the total reflection coefficient at interface B here equal to zero so that all of the electromagnetic waves at say the center frequency of our camera will be transmitted and un, uh, undistorted through material number two through the covering to the sensors on board. Now how can we go about solving this kind of a problem? Well we saw earlier that whenever there is an impedance mismatch on a transmission line a reflection is generated and that's what we have here. We have an impedance mismatch at interface B and another mismatch at interface A because the material parameters are not going to be the same in all three regions. And each of these mismatches will generate reflections. But our goal is not to see if we can get rid of just the initial reflection or a single reflection. Say the very first reflection as the wave encounters interface B. We want the total reflection in the sinusoidal steady state to be equal to zero, the total reflection that takes into account all of the reflections over all time. In other words, we want the reflection coefficient at interface B to be equal to zero in the sinusoidal steady state. And in order for the reflection coefficient at interface B to be zero in the sinusoidal steady state, then we need the input impedance here, eta in, must be equal to the impedance of material number one, eta one. So we need eta in here equal to eta one. To find the input impedance uh, somewhere on a transmission line like we did earlier, we started at the load where there was a known impedance and we worked our way back towards the generator at whatever distance we needed to. Here we can do the same thing. In this case, material number three is equivalent to the load of the transmission line. We know its impedance, let's say eta three, as long as we know the material parameters for material number three. So then to find the input impedance at interface B, we then need to transform the impedance of material number three towards the generator, towards the direction of incidence, incident propagation, uh, uh, and we have to transform it over the thickness of material number two. And using then this input impedance, we can find the total reflection coefficient at, at interface B. Oh, sorry, that's not a reflection coefficient. Reflection coefficient at interface B would be eta B minus eta one over eta B plus eta one. So here we, the way I've written this is eta in, is, we're calling it eta B, the impedance at interface, the input impedance at interface B. Let's go over this in more detail. Starting on the far right side, we can consider that material number three is infinitely long. It goes on for infinity. So in this case, the impedance, the input impedance, which is equivalent to the load of a transmission line, at A plus, so I'm gonna say that A plus is an infinitesimally small distance to the right of interface A, so like right here. And so the input impedance here, eta 
in is equal to eta 3. You can see that here. So for our satellite, material number 3, we said this was free space inside the satellite in between the cover and the cameras. So we're going to say eta 3 is 377 ohms. Next, we can recognize that the input impedance at position A minus, say like right, right, infinitesimally small distance to the left of this interface, is the same as the input impedance at position A plus, which is just on the other side. So here, right just to the left of the interface, the input impedance here, uh, eta in, is equal to eta 3, right to the left. Now if we identify the slab made of material number 2 as being our quote-unquote transmission line, then what we need to do is transform this input impedance at A minus, a distance D down the transmission line towards the generator. So this is towards the generator this direction. And of course, to transform the impedance, the simplest way to do that is to use a Smith chart. But to use a Smith chart, we have to remember to normalize our impedance. What do you think we should use to normalize the impedance at A minus? Uh, 